So next we're going to go through some basic concepts in experimental design. We'll refer to these terminologies um, after this uh, first week. We will go through focus versus nuisance variables, direct control versus indirect control, and within versus between subject design, and we'll also talk about factorial design. So let's first go through focus versus nuisance variables. For an experimenter, the focus variable is what you're interested in. Um, you are interested in studying the effects of these variables. Oftentimes, this could be a status quo institution versus a new mechanism. So for instance, eBay used to have a classic reputation system. So if you are a buyer or a seller on eBay, after each transaction, you know, the buyer can rate the seller at three levels, positive, neutral, or negative. And within the last 10 years, they introduced a new mechanism, which is called detailed seller ratings. And the reason they introduced this, by the way, is because if you look at the empirical data, eBay ratings are too positive. That is, everybody's giving everybody else positive ratings. And so the positive rating, I think, is over 97%. And so if everyone's positive, then there's no information content in the rating system. So through a sequence of lab experiments, researchers decided to introduce the detailed seller rating. So what you see here is that in addition to rating the seller positive, neutral, or negative, buyers get to leave more detailed information on whether the item is as described, how about the communication, shipping time, shipping and handling charges. So uh, these are anonymous and was give, will be given to the seller in aggregate. So this prevents what we often observe in the classic system, which is retaliation and reciprocity. And this has provided more information for uh, the eBay platform in general. So in this case, we have the classic feedback system, which is the classic reputation system. That's our control, whereas our treatment is the classic system plus the detailed seller rating. And these two are our focus variables. What about nuisance variables? Let's use the same context. So you're testing these two variables, you know, the original reputation system plus the new mechanism. Uh, you're, if you're testing this in the lab and the experiment is too long, then the subjects get you know, tired and they're not interested anymore. So the um, subject's alertness and interest in the task at hand is an example of a nuisance variable. So these variables has little or no direct interest to the experimenter, but they can affect the results. So you need to be very careful in controlling both the focus variables and the nuisance variables. So the experimenter has direct control in the design process by choosing the constants and treatments. Constants are variables that you hold at a a convenient level, and that's constant throughout different uh, experimental conditions. Whereas treatments or experimental conditions are variables which are set at two or more different levels, which might produce sharply different outcomes. So one principle, um, a really important principle in experimental design, is that you want to vary all treatment variables independently to obtain the cleanest possible evidence on their effects. And factorial design, which is coming up soon, is one of the methods for doing that. So experimenter can also have indirect control through randomization. So randomization enables the experimenter to assign participants or subjects into different treatments. And um, for instance, experimenter can also randomize roles within an experimental session uh, if that applies. In this case, uncontrolled nuisances can cause inferential errors if confounded with focus variables. So suppose you are primarily interested in the effects of new seeds 
this is an agriculture experiment. But good weather is a confound that could help improve the harvest. In this case, randomization, uh, randomizing the plots of land into getting new seeds versus the status quo seeds, would enable you to look at the effects of new seeds, given that weather condition affect all these different uh, treatments. The next pair of concepts are between subject versus within subject design. So let me go through each of them. So a between subject design means that each subject only experience one experimental condition. So in other words, when you set your focus variable to different levels, each subject only experience one level or one treatment. And this is a very clean design. Uh, when you randomize subjects into these different conditions, you should always use it when learning is important, when you want to control for learning. Within subject design is when each subject participates in multiple treatments. You should use it when individual idiosyncrasies are important, but you have to remember that you know, the order needs to be controlled. So if a subject participates in treatment A followed by treatment B, then uh, you should have conditions where subjects first participate in treatment B and then treatment A. You can also have more complex crossover designs, such as the ABA block versus the BAB block, and so on. So when we control for order effects, there's a very efficient experiment design called the Latin square. This is when two or more treatments are contrasted on the same experimental unit. So for instance, if you want to test four tire brands, let's call them A, B, C, D, using four different test cars, the order of the tire brands distributed over cars using a Latin square looks like the figure uh, on the slide. So in car one, you have the order of A, B, C, D. So let's say the first two are front left, front right, and the last two are back left, back right. In car two, you use CDAB, car three, DCBA, and car four, BADC. So if you look at the same position, which is the front left, you have all four different tire brands in this condition. And same is true for each of the four conditions. So this gives you an efficient design to control for the order effects. And one of the most commonly used experimental design is called a factorial design. And this is when you have two or more treatment variables, and you want to set each of these treatment variables at different levels. So for instance, we use a real field experiment conducted where you manipulate the messages on team forums. So one dimension is to set a goal for the team, versus no goal. The other dimension is to give a link, a URL to the borrowers versus no URL provided. And so this is to you know, vary the absence, the presence or absence of transaction costs. So what would a factorial design look like? So this is a two by two factorial design. So one factor is the goal dimension. Here we vary the no goal and goal. So these are two levels for this factor. The other dimension is the link dimension. So you either provide no link in your message or a link in your message. And this also enables us to study the interaction between these two factors. So when you don't provide any link, so I'm looking at the first column, the no link column, comparing goal and no goal would let the experimenter look at, isolate the effects of goal setting without links. Whereas if you look at the last column, the experimenter can compare the no goal versus goal setting with links, which means when you have a reduced transaction cost, what's the effect of goal setting on lending? So that's an, an example of a two by two factorial design.